Yeah, um, I, I waited for like 10 years since she left. If you notice, she was the one that divorced herself. She was the one that went to court. I want to move on. No one they want to go to the I want to move on. I want to move on. Where is the moving on? Where is the moving on? The man that is deceiving you, after he enjoys that first two weeks or one month, you become as useless as your house So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another interesting episode of the crazy week that was with Barista Nese. <laughs> it's me, a girl Barista Nese and this is Nezeville. We saw our handsome chocolatey uncle, Emeka Ike, looking so yummy, tantalizing, dapper, mature and aging gracefully like fine wine. Of course we all know Emeka Ike. Emeka Ike is a veteran Nollywood actor, the lover boy of that year, the days of Emika Ike and Genevieve. These guys made watching Nollywood back in the days very interesting and exciting for a lot of us. Okay, Emeka was born on the 22nd of March 1967 in Lagos State. Our handsome Emeka Ike from Imo State studied mechanical engineering in Unilag but did not do so much with that certificate. He started his acting career in the 90s after he got introduced to acting by his senior colleague Ernest Obi. But he got his big break in the industry in 1995 when he starred in the blockbuster movie Deadly Affairs. He featured alongside Sandra Achums, Jide Kosoko and Sam Loco and that was a banger. It was forward ever and backward never for Emeka. He has now featured in over 200 movies. Emeka is a star. Five years after Emeka Ike's big break into Nollywood, he met and got married to the beautiful Suzanne Emma. Suzanne is half Dutch and half Nigerian and their marriage lasted 17 years. That marriage produced four children, three boys, and a daughter. Nobody had an inkling that Emeka Ike and Emma were having marital crisis until 2015 when Emma filed for a divorce from her husband of almost two decades, father of her four children. And we were like, what are you talking about? In the divorce petition filed, Emma cited physical and emotional abuse as the grounds upon which she wanted the court to dissolve her 17-year-old marriage. In a report, it is said that a part of the petition read, Each time we fight, he calls me a witch, saying whenever he intends to start a project and he informs me, it eventually fails. He also said that if he hadn't married me, I would have become a prostitute. Since I left, he doesn't allow me to speak with our first two children, asking me to come home if I really want to see them. Even when I was with him, he leaves home for months on the pretext of different appointments. I can't face all of this anymore. I need help, she found. Emeka Ike's wife alleged various degrees of abuse from him, ranging from physical beatings to emotional torture to psychological trauma to mental damage. She said that Emeka Ike tortured her. And we were shocked. Shocked to say the very least. People were like, yes, we know that Uncle Emeka, they quick vex for him. But did he carry that behavior and enter real life? So we made to face Uncle Emeka Ike to explain all this heavy and damaging allegations. But before we could even ask the question, Uncle Emeka started spilling his own parts. In several interviews that was granted by Emeka Ike, he confessed to loving his wife so dearly, so deeply. But I love my wife and she's my wife. Okay, so is everything fine at the home front at this point in time? Like your well, wife is back with you? She's my wife. My, my mother-in-law just dropped from the car. Her so auntie. your wife is back with you? It's not your business. We're working really? things out. And the thing is this. Whatever it is, you keep working on things. You keep working issues out. You're not going to give up on something you love. He said that they didn't have any issues at all. Save for all those small, small, you know, little drama that every couple have in marriage. There's no way you have married that you're not going to have little, little issues. It's not like anybody's cheating on me that really will get a man seriously angry. It's not like I was cheating on anybody. Oh, there was not any serious issues than personal family issues, you know. So we never had issues. We didn't have issues. There was no issue. 
There was no problem. He refuted the claims of domestic violence, saying that he had never raised a finger to hit his wife before in the course of their 17 year marriage. That she just left him, she packed out of the house, and that he had been begging her to come back. That he didn't even care if another man has touched her, he was willing to swallow his pride. He has been begging her to come back for the sake of the children, but she refused. You but never hit her, you, 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 you know? No, no, that was even the part that defiled me most because she was denying it. When I asked her what is going on, she would tell me, No, Emeka, you are a star. That's what people are doing. I don't know. So it was just like I was being played like this, like this, and I was still in love. I was still begging her to come back. So I don't even know what was going on. Emeka Ike claimed that he even knelt down in court. Like he went on bended knees in court, begging her that she should please not divorce him. That she should come back home. But she refused. I was in court. I was kneeling down. I said, please come back home. Yeah. You've disgraced me enough. All over the world. I have no reason to even want to see you. Mm. But for your kids, please come back home. But she said, no. no. His sisters begged her, she refused. Everybody came to plead with her, but she insisted that it was over. So please, I don't care. I was ready to take the shame that maybe she has seen another man or be whatever. Okay, fine, I'm ready to keep the, take the shame. But just come back home for your kids. She said, no, she's done. She's moving up. He said that at some point he had to run to church. He had to go to their pastor, Pastor Chris Okote, to help to settle them. But instead of the pastor to settle them, the pastor even helped her to get a lawyer to proceed with the divorce. And the pastor didn't do much. The pastor even accommodated her in his church without trying to join her back to her husband. He was so bitter with Pastor Chris. Ah, ah. This is surprising. A lot of people were curious. They were confused as to why Suzanne kept on insisting on proceeding with the divorce. Even when all things being equal, it seemed like she had more to lose. Emeka Ike was the star. He was the one calling the shots. He was the one bringing the income. A lot of ladies would line up to take her place. Secondly, they had been married for 17 whole years, almost two decades. Why would she want to throw away all that time, her youth, all the laboring and just move on? It's not like she met another guy and she got remarried. She never did. She had four children, three sons and a daughter for this man. Why would she rather move on as a single mother instead of raising these children with their father if everything was okay at home. It wasn't like she was one rich wealthy woman that was forming, I don't need a man to make it happen. I don't need a ring around my finger. Emika was the major provider. She stayed at home for the most part. So why will she divorce Emika Ike and say that he continuously beats her and torments her at home when Uncle Emika is saying that such a thing had never happened. A lot of people were confused. So yes, Emma put her foot down and despite all the begging and all the everything, it didn't work. She went ahead with the divorce and in 2017, two years after that petition was instituted, the divorce was finalized and they went their separate ways. Ha! Emeka Ike was so badly hot. He almost lost his mind. <laughs> it pained him shige shige to the bone marrow. At this point, Emeka Ike began contending that his wife was blackmailed to leave him by some enemies and detractors. I didn't get divorced. She divorced herself. Okay. Not even that she divorced herself. Her blackmailers divorced her against her wish. Okay. You never hear that woman talk. Where is she? What's happening to her? Why are you speaking for her? Why are you saying she's quiet? Is she on drugs? Did you knock her off? Is she blackmailed with some sex movies? What is the situation? No woman walks away from four children. It's not possible. Mm. Not even a rat. We walk away from one. <laughs> one child? Come on. It's a baby. And you were told, close down the man's business and leave. That's the only choice you have. She was working under a dictate. Mm. That's what you think? That's, what I, that's not what I think. That's She's blackmailed. 
Remember at that time, Emeka Ike was having serious issues with the AGN, the Actors Guild of Nigeria, and their whole presidency tussle with Shegu Arinze, Ibinabo, Fibere Sima, AGK Asiebu, and all of that politics going on there. So he said he believed that his wife was blackmailed to leave the marriage just to hurt him. It was not her decision. Um, there should be a group of people that decided with her, which I can't see here. But uh, those people, one day God will bring them to justice. So that leap was actually why that woman took off. That taking off was running for her life. Not anybody, no I swear with my life, I never think that my kids will tell me to swear. That is what it is. That is what it is. So there were people who were uncomfortable with my success. He also laid claims to a lot of very serious things. He said that his wife was hinting assassins on his whereabouts. Killers came to my house with mask. Mm. Yeah. That day I was walking in from the gate. She was walking out of the gate and the killers were outside. She was the only person around. Mm. I was, I've been asking myself, who told these guys my movement? Because we're the only people around the house. No gate man, no house boy, no house girl, nobody around. Wow. It's lately I'm beginning to discover that she's the one. Two times, three times they've tried to, to kill me. Now they can't kill him. They say, well, you have to leave the house. He left. Because you've made a mistake to hang out with gunmen. Okay. Now they're going to tell you what to, to do. do. And you must do it. His wife did this. His wife did that. Every interview Emeka Ike couldn't stop talking about all that his wife did to him. She made me angry and then she made me, she said this song I was crying and shaking. I was shaking because I can't beat her. She came to hold me from the back where I was crying. I was like, why are you doing this? Why are you torturing me? Nobody knows what I, you go through in the house as a man when you lock your door with the God. Only God. You know what this girl replied me? She said, maybe it was my background. I'm sorry. I said, how your background? What do you mean your background? Maybe I wasn't supposed to be married. But in all of this drama, Susan, Emeka Ike's wife, never granted one interview to elaborate or open up about all of these allegations and as to the reason why she left her husband of almost two decades. So Emeka Ike moved on, began dating and eventually married Germany-based South African model Yolanda. They have a daughter together. He moved to Germany at some point and his ex-wife on the other hand disappeared and have not been seen or heard of ever since that saga. So here we saw again this week a video of Uncle Emeka talking, opening up once again on the issues surrounding his ex-marriage to Susan Emma and this time he came spitting fire. According to Emeka Ike, the whole incident pushed him into severe depression. He said that his wife not only left him but ruined his business and took him back to rock bottom. He said on this fateful day he was traveling to America to go shoot a movie and the wife waited for him as soon as he left and he was on the plane. She went to the school, his school as he called it, called the students together at the assembly ground and announced to them that the school was shutting down, that they should go back home. A multi-million naira project, he called it. He said that when he came back from that trip, he came back to nothing. 80% of his properties were gone. His pictures, his awards, his plaques, everything that he owned disappeared, along with his wife. So they knew I was going to be away for a while. So they took their time to plan. So I was on air when they, she rang the bell and all the students came out and said, look, I'm shutting down this school right now. You all have to go to your parents, put you in another school. I wasn't waiting for it. I came back home to nothing. My, my property, my, my house has been moved. He claims to have done so much for his wife. He said that he saw her through school. He built a house for her, built a house for her mother, did everything humanly possible to make her happy. But he was the only one that loved her. She never loved him, including buying her the latest cars, giving her an enviable life to no avail. She still left him for no reason. He wondered that how come is only a wealthy 
or famous man that gets accused of domestic violence? Why do poor men, bricklayers, carpenters not get accused? That is only rich and famous men that women now come to claim abused them. He also mentioned, just as he always did, that his wife was blackmailed to leave him, but that she was at fault because she was hanging out with criminals. And anyone who hangs out with criminals and assassins is also a criminal, thereby implying that the masked men that he claimed came to assassinate him was working with his wife. Hmm. Emeka Ike came with his mouth full. He said a lot, a whole lot. So this interview, as expected, sparked up a lot of reaction and controversy. People were like, this blackmail, blackmail, Uncle Emeka Ike you've been talking about, come, let us discuss it. Which kind of blackmail? Will they blackmail a married woman, happily married woman, to leave her husband and her four children and go? Is it, did she keep her sin or is it nudity? Let them release it now. When people watch, after one week, they will forget. What is this blackmail? Did she kill somebody? Huh? I don't understand this blackmail you've been talking about for how many years? That will make your wife, that was in a loving marriage, kind, peaceful, happy, everything was going on well, she would just pack out and run away and say you were beating her, that she was blackmailed. They said that they are not understanding. In fact, this set of people believe that Emeka Ike is being economical with the truth, as the story he's painting is not adding up at all, and that there is no woman enjoying peace, happiness, joy, and comfort from her husband who just wake up one morning without issues and decide that she wants to be a single mother and she wants to leave him. That there is something that Emeka Ike is not revealing to the public. On the other hand, some other people believed in Mika Ike. They were like, it's possible that maybe she's just a bad woman or maybe she was indeed being blackmailed. The way she just left the marriage and disappeared into thin air, something is fishy. They stood solidly behind the Mika Ike saying that, come on, look at Mika Ike, the lover boy in movies. He doesn't even look like a man that can hit a woman. It is possible that maybe this woman has a little skoi skoi in her head, that there are some kind of women that do not like staying married no matter how well you treat them they cannot stay <laughs> under a man in a man's house maybe due to family background or how they saw their mother or whatever that truly emika ike is saying the truth and his story has remained consistent through the years so my dear brothers and sisters this one shocked me how do you see it do you think that Susie is actually saying the truth did you follow that story from yesteryears when that domestic violence claim made the rounds do you believe that no right thinking woman would just vacate a peaceful marriage that has lasted almost 20 years and brought forth four children because of blackmail do you actually believe that everything that susan filed in that divorce petition about physical and emotional abuse is true and emeka ek is being economical with the truth. Do let us know what you think about this story down in the comment section. So moving on from that one and to close this video, let us touch briefly on the groom who called off his wedding <laughs> because his bride-to-be spent the pre-wedding night with her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Oh baby, give me one more night, <laughs> one more night, <laughs> one more night gone wrong. So in this video that we came across, it was obviously a wedding venue. We had the canopies, decoration, wedding guests all dressed up and glammed up. It was obviously somebody's wedding. And then we saw a lady who was apparently dressed as the bride, wailing and weeping. And the man who seemed to be the groom was fuming and lashing at her. It was quite a scene. And when we saw that video, we were thinking that maybe it was some wedding issues, vendor did this, um, cake lady did that, until the news began to go around. Now, according to the story making the rounds, in the spirit of parting gifts, closure, one last moment together, this bride went to her ex-boyfriend and spent that night just before her wedding to seal it up and leave it behind for the last time before she officially becomes 
a married woman if you know what i mean and somehow somehow the husband found out and called off the wedding right there on the wedding day some people have condemned this groom very greatly saying ah, what 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 is it my dear brother is this not what you men have been doing in the name of bachelor's eve all these years so why are you blowing things out of proportion they call him childish unforgiving and immature to just hang everybody up, ruin the plans of many months, you know, food, people have bought their ashebi, parents, family, guests, friends from all over the world had gathered, you just call it off because of one mistake, embarrass everybody, they were like the guy was supposed to at least proceed with the wedding, then resolve issues later, rather than make that rash decision right on his wedding day. While on the other boat, <laughs> this set of people put some feathers on the heart of this man saying that he did absolutely the right thing. They were like that was a complete sign from God and if he had ignored it and proceeded with that wedding, <laughs> anything he would have seen, let him take. That the girl was irresponsible to have done that and he did the right thing by calling off the wedding right at the wedding venue on his wedding day. So this issue has sparked a serious debate online. I said let me bring it to your notice and come and tell you. Let me hear what you have to say about it. Do you think that that is enough reason for a wedding to be called off? If you are in those shoes, what will be your reaction? Will you let it slide? Would you forgive it? Or would you cancel your wedding right on the wedding day because of an infidelity that took place before the wedding? Do let me get your thoughts and reaction about this story down in the comment section. So guys, we have come to the end of today's episode of the crazy week that was with Barista Nesse. If you're new here or if you have been watching me without subscribing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, give this video a big thumbs up, drop all your comments and reactions down in the comment section and stay clear because we have so much more coming your way. Don't forget to also follow me on Instagram on Nezaville and Neza Pepper and Bear. I'm going to have the both links dropped in the description box. Thank you so much guys for watching once again i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye